Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. Where there are Sasquatch sightings, that's where we're gonna go. With so many chilling encounters, just waiting to be retold. So join us here in the spooky woods for the Duke Chat Show. go welcome to the show michael bluler how are you duke very well my friend let me put on my official uh, interview hat here there you go when you get the show on the road there we go all set to go got my small cup of coffee mm. <sighs> squatch horrific so anyway, uh, Michael here, unfortunately, got his introduction to the Bigfoot thing not all that long ago, and it was not a very good situation. But before we get to that, you want to give everybody in the audience a little background about yourself? Yeah, Duke, absolutely. Uh, my name is Michael Bluler. I am from Biloxi, Mississippi. That's southern Mississippi, about a mile from the Gulf of Mexico. Um, I'm 48 years old. Um, I, you know, I got one daughter. I'm a business owner. Um, I did 13 and a half years in the in the Army, 101st Airborne. And uh, yeah, thanks man. for your service. Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate that. Um, once once I got out the service, you know, um, I've always been an avid whitetail deer hunter. Um, not just Mississippi. I've been all over the I've been all over the continent. You know, uh, here and there. I, I've even been to Canada. Um, you know, I got out the military and, you know, 16, 16 years later, you know, it happened. Um, it was just um, the best way I can describe it, guys. Um, I'm going to paint a picture for you guys real quick. The people that's not really familiar with South Mississippi or just the Southeast. Um, hunting season in South Mississippi starts October the 15th. That's the first archery season. And believe it or not, I know this is probably going to throw a few people for a loop here, but Alabama, South Alabama, South Louisiana, and South Mississippi, they have two dog seasons. And what I mean by that is they actually use dogs to hunt deer. Yes, they do. Um, that They'll circle off a big old area and drive dogs, and then there's other people on the receiving end. As soon as they cross the road, they're dead. Um, not my thing not too much um did it when i was younger it's kind of like a tradition down here i i, I am a 100 percent steel hunter i um i like to sit up at a tree and you know take my chance that way um i think it's very dangerous um i um there's a lot of people drinking and smoking dope and doing stuff like that and it's just not my thing you know um so to get back to the story um it was it was the second dog season and it was december the 16th of 2020 um i don't i don't like to get into the dog hunting and all that so what i do is i go to a wildlife management area which we call down here just a wma um and in a wma it's still hunting only you're not you're not allowed to use dogs no nothing like that um i went up two counties from where I'm at. I'm in Harrison County, Mississippi. That's where Biloxi is. I went up two counties to Perry County, Mississippi. And I used to go up there, you know, three, four or five times a year when these dog seasons would come in, you know, that just that way I can be out there by myself. I don't have to worry about people in the woods, no people driving dogs, no, no nothing like that. And, uh, it was it was it was a very remote area. It was slap dead in the middle of Leaf River management area, and uh, went, went, and it's really strict in there. It's um, you know um, if you're a felon and you have a gun, it's a no no. 
if you have dogs, it's a no, no, um, game wardens take care of it. Very good. You know, you're nine times out of 10, you're going to get checked going in and out of this area. So there was this particular spot that I used to hunt that, um, it was, it was straight across from the game warden station. It was a huge, huge ryegrass field. Probably uh, Duke, I would say 200 yards wide, and probably at probably 700 to a thousand yards long, you know, give or take. And, you know, other people would come in there and hunt, but everybody would get on the field and hunt. You know, I, this particular day, there was nobody out there. You know, this was a weekday, you know, um, that's another thing. I always try to stay away from the weekend warriors when I hunt because there's just too many people in the woods on the weekends. Um, and they're all prone to half of them are drunk and they shoot each other by accident. So, oh, probably. Yeah. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it one bit, dude. So uh, I went down this. Um, this ryegrass field had a power line running adjacent west of it. It ran north and south. And what I used to do is I would go down to power lines and I would get about, I would set up on the power lines, but I would be about 200 yards behind this ryegrass field. Um, it was on the east side of the power lines and I used to, there was, I, you know, I've been hunting this spot for years. I, you know, I've had my favorite tree that was picked out and everything. And I used to get up really, really, really high, you know, th 30, 40, 50 foot, you know, if the wind's not blowing, too bad i'll get up 50 foot you know safety harness everything because if you fall you're dead and uh what i liked about this um these deer in mississippi are very skittish and very smart it's because of the hunt hunting pressure um a lot of people you know they hunt these fields but these deer don't come out till after dark because these deer know that there's nobody in the woods and um yeah I always had luck because I, you know, right before pitch black dark or maybe 30 minutes before I would catch, I would catch these deer slipping across the power line, going to this field, waiting to, you know, set up on it. You know, once it gets dark, they go out there and feed. They're very nocturnal. It's, it's because of the hunting pressure. And, you know, I've always had a lot of good luck that way. And, you know, uh, throughout the years I've killed, you know, some pretty decent deer out there. And, uh, it was a normal day, man. Normal day, nothing, nothing out of the normal. Um, say it's getting dark at 5:30. I'm up the tree at one o'clock. You know that way. I, you know, I have a good four and a half hours. You know, that's enough time to get, you know, get your smell out the woods, get up high, you know, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it was I got up there. Nothing was out the normal. Um, I just sat there, and. Uh, the first thing I noticed after, you know, about an hour or two, there was absolutely no action at all, nothing. And it kind of made me mad a little, well, not mad, just kind of disappointed because, you know, I always at least seen something, you know, something I didn't want to shoot, like a little doe or a little yearling. I mean, I, all that, that place is just covered in deer all the time. And uh, it was just strange to me that, you know, nothing was coming out, you know, um, it was like there wasn't even a squirrel in a tree or nothing like that. I mean, it was just it was just weird like that. So it gets to be about, like I said, it's getting dark, pitch black at 530. It gets to be about 415. And I hear something coming. This, this is very important for your um, audience to know, too. I'm facing west. I'm, I'm, I'm about 30 yards in the woods off the power lines facing west. Facing away from sunrise. Yeah, absolutely. So I, um, you know, I start hearing something, you know, straight behind me. And I'm one, I'm in one of them tree climbing stands. It's not, you know, it's not like a ladder stand. You actually sit on a platform and you have a bottom piece that you bring up to your feet and you just keep going up, up and up. I'm in one of them stands and I, I cannot like turn around and look and see what's behind me. I can see to my right and to my left, but I can't like turn all the way around. There's just, it's not possible unless you, unless you stand up in your stand and then grab the tree and then turn around. It's just impossible. I heard something coming in the woods. It was pretty heavy. Um, it didn't come in really fast. Um, this place is awesome. 
it's also full of hogs. It's got a lot of a lot of wild boar in there. Um, probably just as many wild pigs as there is deer. Um, mm. I've I've killed a bunch of pigs in there too. And that's what um, at first that's what I thought it was because it was heavy whatever whatever it was. Um, it was you know it, it was it was popping limbs you know pretty good and all that. And another thing, I um, I got to paint another picture. I'll get back to this. I'm sorry about this, Duke. But Mississippi is very, very thick with undercover. When I say thick, um, it's nothing but briars and gallberry bushes and pine trees as far as the eye can see. I mean, it's just super thick. Um, every other year they come in there and they have to burn. They, they, they do a prescribed burn just to kind of keep it down a little bit. So I got this thing coming in, and the first thing I thought, you know, with the weight, I, I said, this has got to be probably a big hog coming in. And like I said, it's not coming in real fast. It's kind of, you know, it's just kind of like douche, douche, douche. It's not like walking fast or anything like that. So this thing gets to be about 40 yards on the side of me to my right, and I can, and it stops. And I cannot see it because... I'm, even though I'm up high, I cannot look down and see whatever it is because of the, the undergrowth. And uh, it just stops all of a sudden. And I start hearing like heavy breathing, like almost like labored breathing, like um, whatever it is might have like a chest cold or something like that. Um, the first thing I thought, to be honest with you, I thought it was something that got shot. And maybe I just didn't hear the gunshot. Lung shot. And I thought I thought it was the lungs filling up with blood. That's what I, I thought it was. And I'm like, wow, you know, I can't even see it. This kind of sucks, you know. So um, about two minutes later, it stops. There's just like nothing there. And I'm like, you know, you know, I'm puzzled. I got a million things going in my mind. I'm like, what is this? Um, man, that kind of sucks. You know, if that would have been a big buck or if that had been a, a pig, I, at least I would have wanted to see it. Mm -hmm. yeah it just shut up you know so after about five minutes i'm thinking well you know it probably smelt me or and it just slipped out and i didn't hear it or you know something something in that neighborhood and so i guess it gets to be about give or take 4 30 4 35 in your situation i'd be worried already if i was hearing something with heavy breathing like that and thought it might be a wounded pig how the hell are you going to get back down out of the tree again exactly i mean I, I just had a million i had a million things going on in my head but it just stopped and i just didn't know you know i figured maybe you know once my hunt's over with i can maybe get down and go in there and see what it was see if it's dead you know i had all that going in my head so it gets to be about 4 30 4 35 and now i'm fighting the sun the sun is now on the top of the trees it's gonna set probably in about 45 minutes but it's set particular part of the day where you're just blinded you know i had to pull my i had to pull my hat down like this and just you know I'm, you know i'm fighting the sun like this yeah and uh all of a sudden in my right peripheral vision about 150 yards down the power lines going north i see something black on the power lines and it's and it's on all fours whatever it is um so I position myself in my tree stand where I can cock to the right a little bit, and I had to aim left-handed. I'm I'm right-handed, and um, you know I'm trying to get everything you know because it's it's you know left-handed is not natural for me. So I'm you know I'm finagling around and stuff, and by the time, <laughs> yeah, and by the time yeah, and by the time I got the thing in the scope, I noticed it's sitting down. Whatever it is, it's sitting down. And uh, the first thing I thought, I thought it was a bear. I thought it was a black bear. We do have black bear in Mississippi. We don't have a wide abundance, but we do have them. I've, I've caught them on trail cams before. We have them. That's what I'm thinking, bear. You know, the, oh, wow, a bear. I'm finally going to get to see a bear in Mississippi, you know. I've seen them in other states, but Mississippi, you know, this is, this is something big time. So um, this thing's sitting down, though, but it, but the way it's sitting down, it didn't make any sense. You know, it looked like um, the way that me and you would sit down. It, you know, it had it had its knees up, and it had one hand that was digging in the dirt. 
So I powered my scope up as, as high as it would go, and I'm looking at this thing, and the first thing I noticed was, was the hair, the hair on the back. The hair on the back wasn't like what you would think of, like, like a double undercoat of a dog or a bear. It was hair, sure enough hair. And you could see the skin in between the hair. The, the, the skin was ashy gray. So, I, you know, I went up on him a little bit to look at, you know, look at his head. And the back of the head was, um, it, it, it didn't make any sense to me. It didn't look like, a, you know, I'm still thinking, you know, maybe I'm looking at this thing at a weird angle or something like that. It made absolutely no sense at all. I looked at the top of the head. The top of the head, it had the conical shape to it, but it wasn't like really pronounced. Like people say it goes up to like a football kind of, you know, it was, yeah. it was conical shape, but it wasn't like pronounced like that. And I started freaking out because I didn't know what it was, man. Um, and I just have to tell your viewers before I had this encounter, um, I'm not even sure I even believed in Bigfoot. Um, maybe that's a problem out in the Northwest or something. I, it just wasn't on my radar, if that makes sense. I looked at the top of the head and the, and the top of the head looked a little gorilla looking, but it, but, but it went conical shape. And I noticed that the hair on the back wasn't um, as long as the hair on top of the head. The hair was just short and spiky. It was weird. And, you know, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, what, you know, what is this? You know, is this a bear or is this, you know, is this somebody out in the woods playing a joke on me? Or, you know, I had a million things going on in my head. I didn't know what was going on. So there was a point where he turned his head to the left just a little bit. And that's when I got to see the side of his face. I, I seen a piece of the eye. The eye was solid black. Um, I seen the nose. I, you know, I'm looking for, I'm looking for a snout, you know, for a bear. For a bear. I, I didn't see all that. I seen the side of a hooded nose, just like us. And I seen a piece of the, I seen a piece of the mouth. That's all I can see. And, um, you know, I, just out of desperation, not knowing what I was looking at or just, I, I guess I was in shock, man. You know, I, I yelled at it. I said, hey, but I said it real loud, you know, like, hey. Um, when I did that, um, it was like, it, it was weird. It was all in one motion, all, all in one motion. He, he put his hands on the ground and he popped up on two feet like it like it was nothing and when he popped up on two feet oh man i don't even know how to describe it man it was like um it looked like a brahma bull on two legs that's what it looked like to me because i you know i've seen plenty of cow pastures of you know bulls that are black like that and he was he was ever he was every bit of that big every bit of that big and then he screamed when he screamed it's the scream that everybody talks about it's like the difference, it was like the difference between an elephant, a lion, or standing next to a freight train. When he screamed, you could feel it go through your body. Like, like your body would like reverb, you could, you could feel it shaking you. Shakes your chest. Yes. Um, he started looking north down the power lines, south down the power lines. He was looking to the west of him, and then he would look my way. And he did that, I mean, he, and then he started walking it in like this little 20 yard, little oval looking circle, looking, he was looking for the source of the sound. That's why I don't think he knew I was there. I mean, give or take, I don't know. Um, there was a point, you know, he kept doing that, you know, looking all over the place. And there was a point where he looked my way again, but he didn't look like directly at me in my face, but he looked my way and his eyes got really big. And um, yeah, and then he just kind of panned up and looked at me. And when he seen me, you know, I was kind of, you know, I was moving around around a little bit because I was nervous. I don't know if it was. That's you know, what gave it away. If you would have stayed still like they always do. He wouldn't have spotted you. I was nervous, man. Um, you know, you see the Patterson and Gimlin film and you seen like you see like the Freeman film. It's always these things that's, you know, they're walking away. They don't want to be seen, this, that, and the other. It was total reverse. As soon as I, as soon as he seen me, he walked straight to me, straight to me. And, uh, 
you know, um, the way he was walking was, was, was pretty freaky, too. It, it didn't look like how we walk. He was, he was walking on two legs. Um, but it if was like coming straight at you. Probably were, what you were reacting to was that they got a weird twisting motion with their hips. Yeah. When they throw their legs, they go around. They don't go straight. They go kind of around and then come down again. And they tightrope walk. They put one foot right in front of the other. So it looks really peculiar when you watch them doing it. And the only reason they could stay upright is because they swing their arms to counterbalance. Absolutely. And and another thing, like the way me and you walk or, or any anybody else, we lock out our legs. Mm -hmm. Legs never completely lock out. They stayed at a, at a slight bend the whole time. Yeah. And then they got that slight forward lean too that's going on all the time. Yes. They're not yep. directly upright. They're leaning a little bit. So he starts walking to me, right? And um, I looked at my gun. I had a seven millimeter magnum, and I unbolted the chamber. Okay, just enough to, just enough to look in there to see if I didn't dummy up and not have one in the in the chamber. I did, and I slammed it back shut. And um, hey, man, if I'm lying, I'm dying. Um, that took about three or four sec, four seconds. That, that that's giving it a lot. Okay. From 150 yards, he starts walking to me to the time I look down four seconds later, slam my bolt back shut and look back up. He's 40 yards in front of me. He covered that much distance in in six, six seconds. Maximum. Yeah, max. Doesn't take that long to open a bolt, check and see if there's a round in there and put it shut again. That's it. Especially yeah. when you're that scared. It probably took way less than that. Yeah. So anyways, he get um, he gets about 30 to 40 yards in front of me and he's just looking at me. And, um, you know, so I brought the gun back over. I put the gun back on him and I and I looked at him through the scope and it was it was a big old black blob. So I had to, you know, power it back down, you know, to the low power to look at him good. And that's when I got to see him good, man. I got to see everything. I got to see it. The, the first thing I noticed was the eyes. The eyes were solid black. Um, they were not, um, there was no whites in the eyes. No sclera at all. It was all black. All black. It was like he had black marbles in his eyes. Kind of like a great white shark or something like that. Yeah. But, but, but they weren't round. They were, they, they were, um, almond shaped. Yep, yeah. They were almond shaped. Um, I noticed, um, his arms, his arms were super long. His arms went probably little, um, his hands went past his knees a little bit. But the weird thing about his arms was he was he was a big guy and he had, you know, he had big shoulders and he had a big, big bicep. But his forearms seemed to me like they were bigger than his biceps. Oh, and, God. And he, he had like Popeye arms. Yeah. And he had this long ghillie suit looking hair coming off of his forearms. It was long and it was thick hair, too, coming off of his forearms. Um Oh man, I've seen so much. Um, I seen, I seen his left hand. I seen, actually, I seen both of his hands. Hands look like ours. Um, you know how we have? If you look at your finger, you have like the little moons in there. Yeah. He had them, but the meat was black. It wasn't oh. like pink like ours. The meat was. What black. color were the nails? Not long at all. I thought. Uh, no, no. What were, color were they? Oh, the nails white. Okay. They were white, but um his fingernails were not long either they were jacked up looking i don't know if maybe they bite them off or i don't know anything and um every now and then he would he would shuffle a certain way or he would make a certain facial expression at me where i would draw down on him and what i mean you know i had the gun on him the whole time but what i mean by draw down is you know acting like i'm fixing a you know shooting when i when i would do that he would turn his head to the side like this he would turn his whole body just his head and he he would give he was giving me giving me that look like don't you do it don't do that that's why i think these things know what guns are oh yeah um that happened several times um there was a there was a point where he did like um almost like a yawn i want to say and um his his uh hinges on on his jaws there, there was like a there was like a ball there and they kept going in and out, in and out, in and out. Kind of like a little kid that, you know, playing with bubble gum, blowing it in and sucking it back in. If that makes sense. Wow. Um, and then he did like a yawn thing. Um, 
when he yawned, his mouth got really big. Um, his lips were not like his lips weren't big. His mouth was big. Yeah, that's lip- the usual description. They got the incredibly wide mouth, but really thin to non-existent lips. That and it almost um, before I continue, even from the time I seen him walking to me, um, it almost looked like he was smiling the whole time. But not like smiling, but maybe that's the way that the, the, the face is shaped. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> they do smile, but they also do displays like uh, some of the great apes where they just do that. The grin is to show you their teeth to threat yeah. display. Yeah. Um, well, he opened his mouth up. He did like a yawn thing, and that's when I got to see his teeth. His teeth were... They were white. Um, I didn't see any like um, I didn't see any canines or anything like that. Giant um, chiclets. Yeah, white chiclets. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, horse, horse teeth size giant white chiclets. That's the description you usually get for the yeah. people that actually get to see that. Yeah, it was it was almost like horse teeth, but even even wider and thicker than that. The inside of the mouth was. Um, like his gums and stuff was like a dark like a like a dark purple maybe mm-hmm. dark skin inside the gums and um yeah that, also by the way that detail matches up with kevin lang from the glag saga and he says the uh, inside of their nostrils when you're close enough <laughs> I didn't think same I, color i did see the nose i do remember seeing a nose i don't remember seeing the inside of the nostrils the, the one thing i do remember is the nose was like ours but it was mm. much the bridge of the nose was much wider and, and and the nostrils were much wider yeah but i remember seeing the inside i mean maybe i did and just well you got to be pretty close to see that detail and you know he was hanging around that particular sasquatch for five years so he oh, yeah. <laughs> got to see all the all parts of them at close range oh yeah 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 I, i'm still listening to that guy stuff man um i'm a hundred percent fascinated and i believe everything that guy says everything um well did you get to the part yet where he uh split up with glag um i don't think so okay you still got a ton of stuff to go yeah how many sagas is that i don't know it's like 10 12 hours yeah it's like it's- 15 16 <laughs> videos including the uh apocryphal ones which were all about what happened afterwards but let's get back to your encounter now so how close Um, was he at this was he advancing on you the whole time this was going on um he he got he stayed at about 30 yards he never would get any closer but he would never get any further it was like he was staying on his ground um there there was a you know um you can see what i want to tell your people when um you can this is not a creature, you know, I'm trying to, that's what I try to tell everybody nowadays. You know, when I used to tell my encounter, it was all balls of the wall, this, that, and the other. But, you know, reflecting back, you can see that this was a people, um, you know, in the face. You can you can tell this was a thinking, a thinking, I, I hate to use the word creature. It was a thinking person. Like, he was thinking about what he was going to do next. And you can see it in his face. There was so much humanity there. The face, uh, you know, people say, well, what did the face look like? It was black. It was, his face was either dark, dark brown or black, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like what the internet's hoo-hawing about now with Mike Patterson. It's, it it was, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah, a lot of them are described, mostly they're between like really dark black and light charcoal gray and all the variations and gradations in between but they can also be like tanned human skin looking color too Mm -hmm. well that's why i say there are people man there's there's probably different races of them you know what i mean well according Uh, to ketchum study you know they're 50 percent human and some of it goes back to the levant and some of it's from north america so all those different and there's more than, you know, it's not just a 50-50 mix on each one. Each one carries a different mixture of human to prime, prime progenitor on the male side. And it could be any, you know, like a lot toward the human side. could be yeah. a lot toward the Sasquatch side and, and all the kinds of variations in between. So that's not only why you have all these different variations in skin tone, but also why there's so much variations in face structure, too. Because yeah. some of them look a lot like a, a big gorilla or something. 
And then there's other ones that look a lot like a human. <laughs> yeah, and this one here, um, he didn't look gorilla, man. He looked more like, I mean, he didn't look exactly human, but he looked more like caveman or Neanderthal in the face. This yeah. one did. And that's what most of the descriptions swing toward. The people get a really decent look at their face. It's like, well, it didn't look like a monkey. It looked like a old, you know, a caveman with too much hair on him. Yes, yes, exactly. And um, it, you know, it, it, he he what he was proportioned um, pretty strange to me, you know, because I didn't know what it was. You know, I, I seen the hair on his chest, and I seen the hair on his forearms and on his back. But the hair on his head was wasn't near that long. It was it was it was short and spiky. Um, his legs had a lot of hair on it. Um, that's one thing to this whole encounter. I, I seen this thing run. I, I'll get to that. But the whole time, not that I was looking, I, I never seen his feet. Not one time. Not once. I don't know why. I just didn't. So, anyways. Th well, this I mean, there's enough underbrush. You probably couldn't have seen him anyway. And look. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. you were at the, you're at the wrong angle. If they're walking away from you, you can see their feet when they lift up their leg on the back kick. But as yeah. they're coming toward you, yeah, you'd have to be on like a lawn for you to yeah. be able to see his feet. Prop, yeah. Um, and this went on, you know, for man, it, it was long, man. It, it 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 seemed to me like it went on for the best of about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. He wasn't going anywhere. He wasn't Good Lord, that is so long for something like that to go on. It must have felt like weeks to you. Yes. So, um, you know, like I said, there was a couple times when I drew, you know, I drew down on him and, I, you know, just to kind of act like I was going to shoot him. You know, maybe he would run away or something like that. He wasn't doing nothing. He would just turn his head to the side like that and just look at me like, don't do that. Do not do that. So, um, just to kind of speed things up just a little bit, um, there was a point where the um, the sun was going down. It was about to set, I guess, sometime in in, the, in that range. And I got to thinking, you know, whatever this, because I still didn't even know what I was looking at. I thought I was either, to be honest with you, I thought I was either going clinically insane, or this is some kind of demon or some kind of monster. You know, that's what I thought it was. You know, I've seen the, I've seen what the, 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 I've seen the worst of what the world's got to offer. You know, through war and stuff like that. But this is a whole different ball game. So, you know, I said, you know, I have to make a choice. You know, um, I'm gonna have to, you know, I can't stay here. I, I, I'm, I'm going home tonight. Is basically what I told myself. And you know, I, you know, I even thought about it. I said, if I kill this thing, I said, you know, if, if I go get authorities. Or something like that. Am I going to go to jail for the rest of my life? Is this some kind of people we don't know about that they're, they're not, people not talking about? Or, you know, I had to admit, you know, I, I was batshit, dude. And, um, you yeah. know how much I hate hearing this over and over and over again? And it could be so easily avoided by the government simply exist, saying they exist. They live out there in the woods. And, you know, here's <laughs> here's what they do. And if you encounter one, be careful. But no, everybody has to find out the hard way. They don't think they exist. Then they see one, flips them out. They don't know how to react to it. They get PTSD, turns their whole world upside down. Now, if you would have known what that was when you saw it, the whole thing would have went completely different. Oh, if I if say say I'm educated now, and this happens to me again, I'm just gonna first. I don't. I don't know, man. I'm still scared. First thing to do is don't yell at them and just let them move along. <laughs> uh, exactly. So, you know, I got to make a, you know, I got to make a choice. You know, I got to make a choice. Um, I got to get out of here. So, you know, just out of desperation, man, um, I drew down on him one more time and uh, he didn't move his head this time. He just looked at me. And, uh, you know, I kind of said a little prayer to myself and, you know, I went to squeeze off on him and I got about halfway through the squeeze and I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Couldn't. Couldn't do it. He looked so human in the face that to me it felt like I know what would have happened to me if I'd have done it. I, I'm educated now, but I wasn't educated at this moment. 
I would have probably got ripped to pieces going out of there by the other ones. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't do it, man. And that wasn't the reason I didn't pull the trigger. The reason I didn't pull the trigger is because I thought maybe I was killing somebody's kid or somebody's dad. That's how human he looked in the face to me. He just had a lot of hair on him and he was super, he was big. But, you know, I, was, I wasn't thinking to myself, um, just kill this, kill this big stupid ape ape and get out of here it wasn't it wasn't like that it was like you know if i pulled a trigger i was murdering somebody that's what yeah. i felt that, that that's you know and that and, that comes up a lot you know you hear that in the skeptics crowd too well people see them all the time when they're out hunting and stuff why don't they shoot one well you know because they look like people <laughs> when you can that, see one that close it's like that's obviously not a bear or some other thing and it looks like some kind of weird giant person and I don't want to shoot a person because that's murder. Yeah. So, you know, that's why hunters don't just shoot them. The main one I get is, why didn't you pull your cell phone camera out and take a picture or take a video? <laughs> that's the last thing you're going to think of. You know, I got my cell phone in my book bag hanging on the tree. I, I You know, I got this thing pegged. And, yeah, the last thing I'm going to think of is grabbing my cell phone to take a picture. I'm trying to get out of here. I'm trying to survive. So, um, I couldn't do it. Um, I'm, I'm out of ideas. Okay. I put my gun down on the tree stand, set it on the rail. I no longer have my gun in my hand and I stood up in my tree stand and I reached my hands out to him and I said, what do you want? When I did that, everything changed, but I said it really loud. What do you want? You know, when I did that, everything changed, everything changed. It was like a draw up from the, from the belly. He screamed again, but it, but it was it was different this time. It was like it was like it was like a draw up. It was like a it was like a uh. And when he turned it loose, there was so much power in that scream that his face, his eyes, his nose, his mouth, all protruded to the front of his face, probably about ten inches, give or take. His face just it looked like his face melted, and when he turned it loose, it about knocked me out of my tree stand. I'll never that that that's the climax of this encounter was that screen. I got to see it from 30 yards away. I hope nobody ever has to see that, at least the way he did. It. I believe Bigfoot Michigan Rob saw that he was sitting on a boat and his girlfriend at the back of the boat got blown overboard. He could yeah. see the ripples across the water coming yep. toward him as it did it. Yep. And he was so and he was so paralyzed and hypnotized by it that he couldn't even grab his girl and bring her back in the boat. He was stuck. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got him coming on my show next week. Yeah, he's a good guy. I love Rob. Um, but yeah, it was um, it was weird, man. It was because his face, like when he when he was screaming, you couldn't see his eyes, his nose, or his mouth. It was all like one piece of meat. And it was it, there was so much power in it. It's like it's uh, uh, it's too hard to explain, man. It's like his face just distorted and melted, and then when he was done screaming, it just his face went back to normal. He went back down to all fours and shot back across the power lines. Okay. Um, when he got on all fours to run, it was super super fast. It was like it was like lightning, but the way he ran was super weird too. It, it, it looked very unorthodox. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen like a big dog, like a Great Dane run. You know how it's kind of larpy? Yeah. A floppy looking. It looked like that, but it was super fast. He gets on the other side of the power lines and he is ripping up gallberry bushes by the roots and chunking them out in the middle of the power lines. Every, about every 15 seconds, he's let loose that screen. Same screen. And he's talking too. The guy with this thing was talking. In between the screams I, I don't know how to do it it was you know just chewing like, you out and uh, the local <laughs> sasquatch dialect apparently yeah, yeah. you know like that <laughs> and uh you know it got to the but he but he started going he he's on the west side of the power lines now and but he's moving north and every now and then i can see like a piece of his shoulder a piece of the top of his head you know i'm i'm, I'm losing sight of this thing and he is just, he's, this thing's going batshit. And uh, 
he just keeps going north, man. Keeps going north, north, north. By this time, I'm standing up in my tree stand. I got my rifle, and I'm thinking, this thing's going to kill me. This thing's going to kill me. How close the, is it to dark? It's very close. Oh, God. <laughs> very, very close. Yeah, you still got to get out of the woods where you can see anything. Oh, yeah. So um, he got about to where I seen him on the power lines the first time, but 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 further west. And all I seen was a black streak come back on my side. Once he gets on my side, I cannot see him. You know, he's on my side, but the woods, the, the woods are way too thick. He's still right. going north, but now he's on my side. And he's just yelling, screaming, just, just being super nasty the whole time. And then everything stopped. Everything stopped. And, you know, I'm like, okay, okay you know, maybe, maybe he left. Um, at that point, at about 200 yards north of me on my side, I heard a fresh tree break, like a fresh, man, like that snap, snap, crackle, pop. Green wood, yeah. Yeah, and I said, okay, he's done gained some distance on me. I'm coming down. I come down my tree stand. I hit the power lines. I start running back. I'm running south. He's north. I got about... I roughly probably got about, I've got over half a mile to go. I've got probably 1,100 yards to go, give or take. Oh, man, I get, hey, man, I got to get a sip of water, man. I'm, when I tell my encounter, my, my, I, my throat gets all dry, man. So just give me just a second. Okay. Yeah, I get worked up telling this encounter. Usually... When I tell my encounter, if it's not like live, like I, I'm in my yard pacing back and forth, it, it still it still does that to me. So, anyways, I'm running down these power lines, and it's full adrenaline, you know. And at this time, you know, I'm I, I was a lot heavier back then, you know. Um, you know, I, I wasn't in the best shape, so I'm I'm running down these power lines, you know, for about a good solid hundred yards, and I get whooped. And, you know, I got a long way to go. So a fast run goes to a very fast walk. And he, and he is still like, you know, it's like he knew I got down from my tree because he starts screaming again back there. I just keep going and going and going. And I didn't hear him anymore. So I stopped just for a second, just to see if I can hear him. And when I stopped now, 40 foot in the bushes, I got something that is mimicking me step for step. And it's not him because every now and then he, he you know, he's, he's lighting it up back there. So got I another start, sentinel pacing you out. Yes. I started running down these power lines and now I got something about four, about 40 foot in the, in the bushes on the side of me on the power lines, matching me step for step. And it's like, you know, uh, you know, I didn't know what to think. Um, like when I would stop, it would stop. And every now and then when I would stop, it would stop, but you knew something was there because it would take that extra step. Yeah. And um, been there, done that. <laughs> got, yeah. got cra uh, my, my, the vehicle I was in got stuck on top of a mountain in December. I had to walk seven miles out in the dark uh -huh. without a flashlight or a gun or anything. And for about the first two miles, one of the Sasquatch was pacing me out. And I'd stopped a couple of times and sure enough, I could hear that crunch one more step afterwards. <laughs> yeah, man. It lets you know. Finally, I hitched a ride with a bunch of snowmobilers that were coming by and got down on the mountain. <laughs> that don't sound like any fun. <laughs> no, I wasn't all that worried, though, because first of all, it wasn't a grizzly bear. Secondly, mountain lions are quieter than that. I knew it for sure it was a Sasquatch and we had been going up that area for a couple of years. And they already kind of knew us. So I figured he was just curious. What's this idiot doing walking in the dark down the mountain in the middle of the night? The road's even closed. You know, it's not supposed to be like any traffic going through there or anything. Yeah. <laughs> you knew what it was. Yeah. So I, it was I, a lot I, different. Actually, it felt secure to me. It's like, good. As long as I got him following me, nothing else is going to jump me. And I probably don't have to worry about him. 
cool and which is like exactly the opposite anybody else that would probably have in this situation oh god something huge is trailing me you know what is it well i already know what it is and it's Uh, from this one group so i'm not worried you know yeah so i see you know you know it the thing you know just keeps going back and forth i start running it starts running i stop it stops sometimes it takes an extra step i walk real fast it walks real fast you know that's what i got going on and there's a point on his power lines uh, where they have like this little plateau that comes out. It don't go all the way across the power lines. It's just like some kind of weird growth from growth from the woods. It's only about yay high, and it's got like little pine tree saplings on it. You know, just some kind of weird little thing. But you know, I've hunted that spot so many times. I always knew what that was. You know, I said, you know, when I get to this little plateau, I know I'm halfway to my truck. So. Um, Every now and then he would light it up back there. And, and, well, and how, I, off, how often was he vocalizing back there? I would say uh, once I started running, I would say probably about probably about every 45 seconds or so. Oh, my God. He would light it up. And uh, but, you know, every other time he would light it up, I knew that I was gaining some distance on him. Which, yeah. I mean, I'm sure he, if he well, he to. wasn't coming forward, but you still have one parallel in you on the way yeah. out, and then Which you got to wonder how many more are paralleling me that aren't letting me hear them, or exactly. waiting up ahead. Exactly. Actually, you know what's funny? I talked to you know I told Robin that you know I've talked. She's heard my encounter a million times. Um, she seems you know I thought I had too, but she seems to think I don't know if she asked her Sasquatch or whatever, but she seems to think I had more like four. That sounds about right to me. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I got this plateau coming up. And the way the woods are shaped, whatever this is on the side of me is either going to have to go deeper in the woods or or I'm going to be able to see it, you know. And, and it was, look, man, it was so close to the side of me. I can actually see the bushes moving. Oh, I just, God. I just couldn't see it. Yeah. So, you know. Once I seen the plateau coming up, you know, it's like I caught another wind. So I start running, and this thing is just, you know, it's it, it's going to, when I get to that island, that plateau, it's going to intercept me, whatever it is. Man, and then he, you know, he vocalized again right before I got there. And as, as soon as I heard him vocalize and I, you know, I got this thing closing in, I had enough, man. I just, I just shot a shot in the air. That's what I did. Just, just cracked a shot in the air. I didn't name in the bushes or back there. I just shot it, shot in the air. And believe it or not, Duke, uh, when I did that, everything everything stopped. Um, I started walking. I got past the plateau, and uh, I no longer heard whatever it was on the side of me. No longer heard him back there. And then I remember Crescent. You know, Mississippi doesn't have no mountains. I think we have like one mountain, and it's like how far do you think you were from him when you cracked off that shot? That he was, or the one next to me? The one that was making the noise, it was making sure you were continuing by that, onward. By that time, I would say I, I was probably a good 450 yards, 500 yards. Well, at the point where you cracked off that shot, that let him know how far away you were and that you were going in the right direction. Could be, could be. Whenever I, whenever I shot in the air, everything stopped. I started walking. And um, like I said, Mississippi, we do have a lot of like hills, but we don't have any mountains, you know, not like that. It's yeah. pretty flat land, um, but we do have some hills. But well, I, remember, I don't feel bad because a lot of places that claim to have mountains don't actually have mountains. They just think they have mountains. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they th- it's more like hills. Exactly. They're big hills, really big hills. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, the Ozark, you know, the Ozark Mountains, a lot of them are just hills. Yeah. So well, all he, those East Coast mountains, they, they used to yeah. be a lot bigger. They're just worn down. Yeah, They're so but, old that half of them's missing at, the, at this yeah. point. Rockies I, are newer. You still got somewhere between one and 6,000 feet of vertical granite at the top above the tree line. That's a little different. Yeah. <laughs> you're not walking around on that. You're mountaineering it or you're not on it. You know. <laughs> I've been across the Rockies before. It was the first time I've ever got to mountains, and they said that you have to put chains on your tires. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's in the summer. You should see it in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um anyways, I crest this hill 
pretty pretty good size hill and i seen my truck down there the sun has done set um i i'm i'm operating in nautical twilight at this point um but i did see my truck and it was still way down there man i couldn't even all, all i could see was the top of my truck i couldn't even see the doors or the tires or nothing yet and when i when i seen my truck man i caught another gear that i i, I didn't think i had and um, before you knew it I, you know i'm getting close to my truck and you know i got my conscience in my head saying you know mike get your truck go don't let the curiosity get the best of you this that and the other get in your truck get the fuck out of here sorry about swearing i don't know if you do that no on your problem show. So anyways, um, I get to my truck and I stuck my key in my door. And as soon as, as soon as I stuck my key in the door, I heard one last scream. And it was way, 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 way back there. And But it was still, still, you know. So loud. <laughs> so loud. I got in my truck and, and this particular area I was hunting, um, it had a cul-de-sac. You would drive like two miles down the road, turn around and pass back through. I wasn't doing that. I got, you know, I backed up in the ditch and just about got my truck stuck. That would have been lovely. Oh, God. Um, I start coming out of this management area. This management area is nothing but dirt roads for probably about 10 miles. You know, um, it's a bunch of sharp curves. You know, I was hauling ass. I mean, the, the ass in my truck was swinging around on every corner. I don't, I probably wrecked, almost wrecked a dozen times. I finally catch blacktop and I'm coming down Highway 26 as fast as my truck can go. I just had it to the floor. And then I caught Highway 15 back to the coast where I live. What used to take me an hour and 10 minutes to get there took me about 40 to 45 minutes so i'm back in the city now i'm in, i live in a neighborhood man I, I you know i'm not i'm not out in the sticks i live in a casino town you know it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a small city you know uh right by the beach and uh when i when i got home man I, it took me 30 minutes to get out my truck and i'm home i get home i threw my gun on my bed and I, and this is a, this is the winter time, you know, this is, you know, down here, the thirties is cold here. Oh yeah. And, uh, it was like in a, you know, probably freezing 32 degrees, 33 degrees, somewhere around in there. I got in a, a shower, man, and, and I put it on full blast cold and I laid in a fetal position for about an hour and I come out of there and I just passed out on the couch, man. It was, I guess it was the adrenaline dump, you know, and I woke up the next day. And I thought that was a dream. I really thought that was a dream. I, I said, wow, what a nightmare that was. How vivid was that, you know? And I walked in my room and I seen my gun on my bed. And I was like, holy fucking shit. That happened. Yep. That was my first encounter. I had another one this year, too. No visual. But, um, so, after this happened to me, the following hunting season, I wouldn't go in the woods. Um, yeah, I just couldn't do it, you know. Um, I After think I had I, my first encounter, and keep in mind, I had no neighbors around me and I lived at a house in the woods, oh and no, no other options. I didn't go in the woods for two years, that's and then after that, I stayed within about 100 yards of the house yep. and heavily armed for yep. about two years. Then yep. when I went further into the woods, keeping in mind this was four years after the encounter, I would go in with other people and I insisted on being armed like Rambo. Yeah. So I totally get it. Yeah. Uh, the following hunting season, I went hunting one time and it was in somebody's backyard in a shoot yeah. with two other people in there with me. Just hunting a field in somebody's mm -hmm. backyard yeah so this hunting season came up this past so that you know it's been two years so um you know probably i would say end of august or so i started you know walking in the woods a little bit i wasn't getting too far you know just putting game cams out and stuff like that not for bigfoot for you know for deer 
And uh, I got comfortable again, man. I don't know how I did it, but I got comfortable. But I still wouldn't go like way off. I, you know, I would hunt like a hundred yards from my truck, stuff like that. And uh, hey, sure. by the way, we found a bunch of seventeen-inch tracks earlier today, and yeah, you several of them were no more than about uh, you know several hundred yards from the truck. So, <laughs> oh god. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, not to blow that uh you know that calm you? for you or anything but uh it's okay <laughs> kind of depends on where they're at yeah. sometimes you can get out of the vehicle step into the ditch and go hey there's one right there <laughs> so you know at you know after my encounter <clears throat> i watched your show a lot i watched west garman's show a lot um i read a lot you know i read some books and, you know, I just did, you know, I wanted to make, I'm pretty sure, maybe not at the moment, but maybe a couple of days after, you know, I probably said, yeah, that was probably a Bigfoot. Because I didn't know what a Bigfoot was. Uh, I, you know, I remember seeing the Patterson-Gimlin when I was like a kid. Like, yeah. you know, we, we was always told that that was, that was a hoax. That's fake. We was told well, that. It hasn't been debunked over 50 years later. And yeah. as you guys watching the show, we'll see in the the new end part of the show you're going to see the pg film uh yeah. actually not only her but also back to back with paula from the freeman film doing a little double dance there for a little while and yeah. speaking of mississippi which is where michael is uh in the beginning in the opening sequence where it talks about down to the gulf of mexico that was filmed in mexico and it's ripping the bark off of a tree uh, in mississippi yeah, um, are you talking about uh, the one where the kid, where the dude's like looking in the swamp and it's like digging, it's like pulling yep, the bark? Yep, it's kind of sitting in the shallow water, ripping the bark off the tree. Yeah, That's I in the intro I, part of the show that you guys, all, all the people that watched the show already saw. <laughs> hey, I know that guy and I know exactly where that's at. That's what I'm saying. Same description as yours too, by the way, talking about the short hair on the top of the head and everything. Yep. That was not a skunk ape. That is, that is a Sasquatch, just the version... Yeah boogers that live down in mississippi well you know some people say there's type ones and type twos and type three so you know i don't know what to think about all that it's all regional there are there's skunk apes down there a little bit different than the sasquatch are and they look they've got long hair more, like, more, more orangutan. Uh, yeah and they're also more uh unreliable and dangerous than the regular sasquatch are so you even want to run into them less and the only saving grace they have is they don't get to gigantic size, but they're more like crazy frat kids that you can't trust whatsoever what the hell they're going to do. No. I can tell you, I can tell you this, the one that I seen, uh, maybe he wasn't as big as some of the ones like out Northwest and stuff like that, but I can tell you this, this guy was big enough to pop, palm the top of your head and, and rip it off. Yeah. What do you guesstimate his height at? You saw him at, at close range yeah, for quite a while. Could, um, you know, that's a that's one little part I left out in the encounter. I just forgot to add it in. Um, there, there was a dogwood tree that was right there, yeah, right, right there next to him. And uh, he kept um, every now and then. You know, he he didn't stay in one spot the whole time. Like he would shuffle a little bit to the left and to the right, but he never would get like thirty. He he stayed at like thirty yards. But there was a dogwood tree right there, and he kept. He, he wasn't like ducking his whole body. He was just like moving his head around it. That's all. I went back to that spot and looked at that tree. That 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 branch is easy eight foot. So he, he was mm. taller than eight foot. Big boy. Yeah, big enough. Yeah, at the the high, the massive height and size. Now you're talking about something look like a Brahma bull. He's at least eight feet tall, probably closer to nine. Nine foot tall with heavy build. Like he's well over a thousand pounds, probably closer to twelve hundred. I put I put him. Um, I tell people this sometimes. Um, if you take like a four hundred pound regular man, okay, for the guy that's four, just four hundred pounds, that's a pretty big guy, okay. Yeah. Imagine him sitting down in the grass, okay, and he wants to get up to two feet, okay. It's going to take him a while. He's going to have to roll over, get on his knees, and hopefully have something to grab onto. This guy was every bit of 1,200 pounds, and he popped on the, up on the two feet like it was nobody's business. Yeah. Some people don't understand. <clears throat> it was somebody else that had a great example of this. They were at a, uh, a game preserve where they had rhinos. 
And yeah. he wasn't too far away from this rhino. And, you know, a rhino weighs a couple tons. Yeah. And he's behind the rhino, and he makes an abrupt noise and startles the rhino. And the rhino leaped into the air, did a 180 spin before he came down on the ground again, facing the guy that just made the noise. That's two tons that just went boink and did a 180 without even touching the ground. <laughs> yeah. That, well, that just tells you, you know, creature, you know, them animals just have tremendous power, man. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, you know, keeping in mind, they're used to carrying that massive weight around. These guys have to be athletic or they're dead. They live in the wild. If there's no doctor, chiropractor, any of that kind of stuff. You get too badly injured or something, you're pretty much toast. So yeah. they've got to be in great shape. It's part of their job. Yeah. So, you know, um, like I said, you know, this, the hunting season just passed. Um, so not the hunting season after my encounter, but the one this year, I was getting, I was getting ballsy a little bit. You know, I, you know, I was thinking to myself, you know, you, you, it, it doesn't have to be over with unless you want it to be over with. So, you know, I started thinking to myself, you know, um, you know, that happened. That's probably a one, probably a once in a lifetime thing, this, that, and the other. So, you know, I, I started growing some balls a little bit and um, I started going out putting trail cams out and uh, sure enough, you know, I hunted a couple times till dark and nothing happened and I was like, oh, you know, that's cool. good. I'm back. So I went um, to a spot that's roughly probably about 70 miles from my encounter spot, more west, more towards the Mississippi River. It was more, and it was different terrain. It was more, uh, it was more swamp land. I, I was on, I was on um, high land on my first encounter. Oh God, Michael! Didn't anybody warn you about the the flood plains and the swamp lands, and that's where <laughs> they like to hang out the most? That didn't anybody tell you that? Oh, for God's sakes! <laughs> so, um, I put some trail cams out in this spot, and um, it's the kind of trail cams like when it takes a picture. It shoots you a text to your phone and it shows you the picture what you got. Plot watcher, yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I started getting some good deer in there and then a shitload of hogs again. We hunt them both. So, <laughs> yeah, I said, I'm going to go in there, you know. So I went in there and this place was even more remote than from my first encounter. There was nothing. You look at this place on Google Earth and there's nothing, nothing. So I went there and, um, Got up my tree like I usually do, but I was I was in a bottom this time. I wasn't up on high land. I was I was in a pine tree, but it was in it was in a bottom. Just nothing but dead wood everywhere. Loud as hell when you walk in there, you know. Just, yeah. So um I got up there and I hunted. And um same thing happened, same exact thing happened. No action at all. Nothing. Not one squirrel, not one bird, not one woodpecker. Not the one dead rack. forest. That's what dead. I like to call it. it. Sometimes the wind even stops blowing and you're like, okay, this is like really creepy now. Not only no animal sounds whatsoever, now the wind isn't even blowing. <laughs> yeah. And and this is crossbow season. This isn't gun season. I do have a pistol. I do have a pistol in my bag. But um Did you get I, the I, feeling? Did the hair on the back of your neck stand up? Did you get the sense of dread? No, anything like that? Um uh, I just remember it was archer season, so you know it's the it's still not cold here yet. Right. Still boiling hot. Yeah. You know, I'm more worried about mosquitoes and and yellow flies than anything. Right. You know, I'm, and uh, down down here in the south, and when you hunt like archer, you, you need to have like a thermocell with you, uh, if you know what that is. It's like mm -hmm. a little thing. It burns incense and it keeps the the bugs off of you. Okay. Okay. So anything, uh, um, anyways. So like yeah. the backwoods version of a Roman Catholic incense stencher. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Exactly. A exactly. hillbilly incense stencher. Got it. Yep. <laughs> yep. So you know, I had that thing burning, and um, you know, you know, uh, when you hunt <laughs> here, you're, you're you're hunting their nose, so it's it's not good to burn that kind of stuff because you can kind of like give yourself away. But the mosquitoes are are so bad, you don't give a shit. You know, yeah, they're Out brutal. Well, if you're up in the air at all too, and there's not much air drift, it's not going to really go anywhere or anything yeah. to be able to to scent it. 
Right, exactly. That that's another reason I used to get super high up the tree to kind of get my smell out of there too. That plus, if you're more than about 15 feet off the ground, there aren't any mosquitoes. They don't fly that high off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> off the ground. Yellow flies, yellow flies will get you no matter what. Yeah. Them damn things. I don't. Do you get horse flies and shit where you're at? Horse flies, yeah. Or in Minnesota where I used to live, we had deer flies too, but uh, they're like I'm... inconsequential compared to the mosquitoes there, which are horrendous. They're like Japanese zero plane size, World yeah. War Two. <laughs> That's what we call them, uh, Duke. Down here, it's the it's the little yellow deer flies. They're terrible. Yeah, they're horrible. Yep, and they'll, they'll leave welts on you too. So I'm in this bottom, and it's uh, same situation, man. No action, and you know I'm educated now. You know I've uh, I've had two years to look at this. So at this point, you're like, this isn't right, and this could be indicative of things being here that exactly. I don't want to encounter. <laughs> I'm thinking, and, but but then my pride got the best of me, and it's like, no, you need to stay stay in the dark. If you get out the tree, what did you drive all this way for? You know, kind of, kind of uh, deal. So it, you know, I make it till dark, and um, I stand up in my tree stand, and I, I I get my book bag ready, my book bag ready. I'm trying to put it over my shoulder, and I hear a tree knock, fifty, so close. Oh God! Fifty feet in front of me, I hear pow, 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 and then three knocks. Pow, 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 and then wow. straight behind me, I get an answer. Pow, 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 and then I get a whistle in front of me, and the whistle sounded very human, to be honest with you. Just, just sharp. <whistles> yep, and then. <laughs> I've heard that a lot of times. Yeah, and then straight behind me, I get an answer with the whistle, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, no, I'm not doing this shit again. I come down my tree, and as soon as my foot hit the ground on that bottom, because it's not but dead wood, it like just made a crunch, mm -hmm. the woods exploded. I had shit running north, south, east, east, and west. I had shit running towards my truck. All of it sounded bipedal. Every bit of it sounded bipedal. I've been hunting hogs and deer my whole life. I know what they sound like when they run off. You, oh, yeah. you, it was all bipedal, and it was all running in different areas. It was a bunch of them. Had to be. Had to be. Like I said, the woods exploded. So they all were running away from you as fast as they could? I guess. It sounded like the woods exploded. It sounds to me like juvies were watching you, and it's like, oh, oh, the human's moving. Run for it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, of, yeah, yeah, it, it could have been juvies for sure. So um, this bottom, like I said, I don't, I'm a, I, I wasn't, but probably 120 yards from my truck. Well, thank God you weren't that far from it this time. No, man, I just got I just got out of my truck and I went straight down a hill into this bottom. You know, it wasn't far at all. But this bottom, I had to walk through it a little bit, and then I had to make a sharp left to start making that hill. There, there was a game trail right there, and it's and by this time, I have my crossbow on a sling across my back, and I have my pistol. On, on on my belt and as soon as soon as I, I i did a very not a very good thing um it was out of fear as soon as i made a left hand turn i heard something straight in front of me grunt like really loud like grunt and and start running off when i heard that i emptied my whole magazine into nothing I know that's that's not a good thing to do. I know that's not very responsible, but I was that's how afraid I was. I emptied my whole magazine. I went back in my book bag and grabbed another magazine and put it in and started making it up that hill. And that hill was pretty steep, man. Um, there's a few parts on it where like you have to grab a couple bushes and pull yourself up. Going down it's nothing. 
I, I crest that hill and I get on back to flat land and I heard the same thing on the right right hand side of me again. Another grunt and then something's hauls ass. Could have been pigs. Could have been. Oh. Emptied my clip again. Emptied my whole. I, I had three magazines. I had one. I had one in my gun and I had two in my book bag. Emptied it. Emptied all twelve. Put another magazine in it. Got to my truck. Uh, cranked it up started coming out of there and this time I did not drive irresponsibly because the road was just too bad for that. I, I would have definitely went off the road and I get home and you know, I was just like, well, you know, I guess, I guess it happened again. You know, that's the only thing I can think of. But um, that's about all I got with encounters, but I can tell you one thing through all of this, even with my first encounter, they've always been around. They've always been around. I just didn't know what they were. I've heard the, I've, I've heard the tree knocks my whole life. My whole life I've heard them. I always pawned it off as some jerk off in the woods banging on a tree or maybe I'm close to somebody's house and they're doing some kind of construction. I always made an excuse. <laughs> And, and I know and, some people that were at this cabin out in the middle of frickin' nowhere, and they were hearing this practically every night, and they're going, who the hell's got property out here, and why are they building at night? Yeah. <laughs> and I've heard the whoops my whole life, too. I've heard the whoops a lot. I've always pawned that off on some kind of weird nocturnal bird. Or, yeah. Yep. But I've, I've heard... Um, there was another time when I, I was hunting. This was years ago, and it, it freaked me out. I, I, I thought it was a ghost or something. I didn't know what it was. I was hunting um, in Louisiana, and I was in a remote area. I was hunting. I, was, I wasn't I was any bottom. I was hunting a ridge on the side of a bottom. I was in one of them. Um, it was private property. It was one of them box stands. You know, you just climb the ladder and get in there. Right. And um, right before dark, I heard what sounded like a newborn baby crying wow yep middle Time of nowhere was that that was probably let's see um, that was probably 90 91 92 maybe what time of year hunting season probably so probably fall december ish january -ish. yeah yeah weird um yeah. And I've been in situations where I've been hunting in the middle of nowhere and I've heard talking, but it didn't sound like the Tasmanian devil kind of thing. It was just far enough to where you couldn't understand. It sounded like real people talking, but it, it was just far enough to where you couldn't make out what they were saying. It was just kind of like, da, 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 you know, mm -hmm. yeah. but, there's, but there's nobody out there. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, it's also oh, disturbing when you hear what sounds like kids talking and giggling and laughing and playing and it's the middle of the night in the middle of nowhere and you yeah. know there's no kids out there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did see a UFO one time um, when I was in the Middle East. I was in Tikrit. Um, we was all sleeping in the middle of the desert and um, I seen something out there it, it wasn't very invasive though it was way up there it was it was just the the way it moved and stuff like that it, it just couldn't have been a satellite it was just right. too good. erratic movements satellites yeah. just have a course and they just basically follow it and that's it and uh one more thing i want to say is this comes from robin mccray actually she asked me when i took when i told her my encounter she she says do you think in that encounter talking about my first one she says do you think there's a possibility that you had any missing time and you know that you know that threw me for a loop and i you know i tried to think about it for a couple weeks and then i come i did come up with something and it could be coincidence but it seems like like i said i always get up my tree stand early say one o'clock my encounter didn't start happening until like 4 15 4 20. Right. But now that I think about it, it seems like from the time I got up the tree at one o'clock that there was no time and this shit happened. But yet the duration of what was happening only seemed like it was about 20 minutes 
and then the freaking sun was going down. Yeah. So, so where the other three and a half hours go? Yeah. Well, yeah. Where did they go? Because <laughs> it just seems like you know I got comfortable with my stand and la da 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 thinking about something, and all of a sudden I hear something coming behind me. But I got up my tree at one o'clock. Yeah, man, hey, man, I, it, it can be anything. I'm not saying it is missing time. I'm just saying, it, you know, that now that I think back on it, it just seems like there wasn't much time. Yeah. It could be just perception, too, because of the situation like that gets burned into your memory so bad that the little inconsequential crap right before it just kind of gets forgotten completely. Irrelevant. Your memory. Oh, it seemed like nothing happened. Yeah, compared to what happened later, nothing happened. <laughs> yeah. So it's possible, though. I mean, Robin tends to be right a lot more than she tends to be wrong. But yeah, I mean, you don't know if it was that you actually had missing time or if you have perception of missing time. Exactly. And if there was missing time, what actually happened? I mean, you might have just got zapped and stunned by something for a while or you don't know. I heard uh, I've heard so much stuff about getting zapped. Um, I, I I heard uh, one of the main things it does to you when you get zapped is it puts it puts the worst fear that you could ever think of having into your mind. Apparently, they got two different things they can do, and one of them is to use infrasound. And infrasound has a whole range of things that it can do to you, and it seems like some of them really can like fine tune it. There can be a whole line of people walking one right after the other, and they can nail one of them in the line and not hit the rest of them and they can fine tune the effects you can be uh, you can become confused so you think you're walking in a straight line you start walking in circles yeah you can be you can be uh have a sense of dread that's that's another easy one they've done tests with infrasound they can make this happen with infrasound on on humans just in the test labs so these are all the things they should be theoretically capable of doing and we're seeing this kind of stuff in the field they can make you nauseous they can make you vomit they can make you crap your pants they can make you pass out they can make your heart explode and kill you i've heard that too have you been popped i have never been zapped with infrasound that i know of although i've had people on teams with me papa craig was right behind me and he got nailed and it dropped him to his knees he thought he was having a heart attack wow and then as soon as he got back to camp, he sat down for about 20 minutes and he felt a little bit better and he figured he'd just crawl in his tent and lay down for a while. And as soon as he got away from me and got in his tent, then he got hit by the dread. And I was the only one that was awake. I'm sitting out by the campfire by myself in a chair and I literally fell asleep. And he's 30 feet away from me in the tent and he's getting the dread. <laughs> oh, goodness. That's crazy. So, yeah, I got woke up by a deer on the opposite side of the fire pit from me. Oh, what wow. made a noise, and I went, eh, and I stuck my head up, and it panicked and went, oh, crap, that's a human in the chair, and it went, <laughs> and bolted. And, of course, that's what I saw when I woke up, so I'm like, wow, <laughs> freaked me out, too. <laughs> so let me ask you this, Duke. Uh, do you think if we ever do have disclosure on these things, if if is a big word, I understand that, how do you think, how do you think, that we as a people is going to treat it well i mean it's pretty simple you can treat them the same way that we're treating grizzly bears right now which is to say this area closed yeah mama, mama bears having kids here right now or we know there's sasquatch in this area stay on the trails you'll be fine because they sasquatch understand that stuff a lot more than bears do yeah they can totally get the hint that all the humans are going to stay on the trail in this area and as long as they do we'll just ignore them as soon as they start not being on the trail then maybe we'll throw a log at them. <laughs> it, they're very smart. They can pick up on this stuff very rapidly. It didn't take them long to notice that the the uh, uh, re uh, recreation area up the mountainside from where I'm at right now has been no hunting and no camping for 80 years. Humans are only up there during the day. But if yeah. you go up there and you get off the trails, you start noticing structures and tracks all over the friggin' place. Because guess who's up there at night massacring the deer? <laughs> Them? Yeah. yeah. Plus, there's a whole elk herd that lives on that mountain. <clears throat> so they're very good at noticing what's going on around in their background and taking advantage of it. I mean, they might not necessarily know that that sign on that fence that says no trespassing means no trespassing some of them might know that 
But on the other hand, they can observe that nobody ever goes over that fence into that area. And it's easy enough for them to step over it. And then no humans ever come in here. This is a much better place to be. <laughs> what, what, what about what everybody... The, I've heard so many reasons, but the main one I hear is what everybody hears. The logging industry. Uh, no. No, it's because they're uh, actually relatives of us. According to the going scientific malarkey, we were successful and wiped out all of the other human-like races a long time ago. And there's no other relic hominids on the planet, which is a lie. And then the other problem is that they're not actually truly distinct from us. They're actually hybrids of us, which creates, creates even more dilemmas for them. Like where exactly did these hybrids come from? What was the prime blood species that created the hybrids? Yeah. And then if you look further at the DNA of the father's side, the nuclear side, doesn't look like it was generated naturally anyway. So apparently somebody was playing mad scientist to these guys 13 to 15,000 years ago or longer. Okay, who was doing that? Because it wasn't us. Or if it was us, start admitting there were previous technologically advanced civilizations that you're lying to us about that they never were. Yeah. So it creates so many problems for their their BS narrative that they're trying to push on everybody that they just don't even want to deal with it. I mean, they would much rather say, yeah, UFOs are real. We got aliens from space. We've been uh, talking to them and stuff. And yeah, we made alliances. They're not going to want to talk about friggin' Bigfoot. Uh-uh. So them disclosing Bigfoot, never going to happen. Bigfoot's going to disclose Bigfoot before they do it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I believe that. Um, you know, it, it, it's almost, I think, they might be older than we are. Well, according to the DNA evidence, we don't know. The, the current Sasquatch that we've got here that we've been able to DNA test from the Ketchum study uh, are hybrids with us. So mitochondrial DNA, female human from Levant and or North America, and nuclear DNA, the male part of it, we don't know what the hell that is. It doesn't match anything else in the gene bank. So it's not Gigantopithecus. Sorry, Dr. Meldrum, you're an idiot. That's already been DNA <laughs> tested. It's not, uh, you know, Heidelbergensis more than likely, although we don't know over that one for sure, because as far as I know, we don't have DNA for it. But it's not Neanderthal, it's not Denisovan. We've got those sequenced already. They don't match. So we don't know exactly what the father of this hybrid was, which also brings to mind how much earlier was there this, you know, pure blood species running around before it hybridized with us and created what are the current Sasquatch? And then an additional question, are there still some of these pure bloods running around somewhere? What do they look like? Do you think it can be do you think it can be possible what we was talking about on the phone a couple days ago where they have the uh, the creatures they look like a bigfoot, but they're too big. They're like thirty foot. Well, you know, there's all kinds of weird things that are back in the uh, the history of legendary and mythology and folklore and all that kind of stuff. And you've got all different weird branches of cryptids and stuff. You've got trolls and you've got giants and you've got the Sasquatch people. And, the you fae. Know, you've, you've got what, and the Fae and then the Gugwe, which believe it or not, those things are in other parts of the world besides North America. In Europe, they used to call them bugbears. Yeah, the Fae, that's just, what is that, fairies? The Fae are the, fae are the fairies. And, Okay. At best, they're neutral. There's two different groups of them that are the Sealy Court and the Unsealy Court. The Sealy Court are the good fae, which means they're true neutral, and they could turn on you in a second. The Unsealy Court are neutral evil, which means they're pretty much evil all the time, and you can never trust them, and they hate humans. Oh, goodness. There's so much stuff out there. So there's a lot of good reasons to avoid having anything to do with the fae. You know, yeah. it's possible you could have a good interaction with them and they might like you, but then they could just change their mind on a dime, too. Would, would, would the Fae, Fae kind of tie, tie into, like, the e elementals and all that? Well, yeah, I mean, at that level where you're talking about the Fae, you're talking about critters that probably have a different vibrational frequency that we do that can shift in between realms. Yeah. And that's the same thing with the personifications of... Uh, of natural matter, which would be when you're talking about elementals of various kinds, yeah. dryads, naiads, nymphs, sylphs, salamanders, blah, 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 all the way down the line. Those are all just personifications of natural forces, essentially. So, I mean, it's like 
they can have a physical body, but they probably don't most of the time, you know, they're not yeah. here most of the time. They're in some other quasi dimensional realm that they exist in most of the time. And that's one of the things with Sasquatch too. If you talk to the, uh, the native tribes, they'll tell you that they walk in two worlds. They're not just here. They can also shift to this other realm that we can't think, get to. You know, I didn't in both of my encounters, um, I didn't get none of that. Uh, it was pretty much flesh and blood, but you know, there was a little woo um, in the first one where he covered that much ground in that little amount of time. I thought that was strange, but you know, after, you know, talking to people and doing my own research, which, you know, I haven't been doing this forever, but I have reason to believe that, that I think they're God gifted. I think, I think they can, I think they can be interdimensional. Why not? Well, they have abilities that we, we may have had at one point and now lack is my theory and yeah, they're still in tune to that stuff because we use technology for a crutch on everything yeah and they have to use natural skill and training on everything so exactly. it's like being a little kid in, in a shaolin temple if you grow up as a kid in a shaolin temple how good are you going to be at everything by the time you're you know an adult well really yep. good and now you, you figure according to what we've been able to figure out they got a lot longer lifespans than we do what if you got decades to work on some of these magical tricks? How good are you going to get at it? And they may all have the capacity to do this, but as Robin will tell you, they don't all know how to do it. And that's why I like to use the analogy of the martial arts school. They've all got certain techniques that are distinct to them. Their yeah. students are really good at them, but they don't teach them to anybody else necessarily. So you yeah. might have a completely other group of martial artists that don't know that trick at all. I've never seen it before and we'd be mind boggled by it. And that's the way it is with them. Some of them are like the Amish. They're still in horse drawn buggies and some of them are like doing, you know, <laughs> they're so advanced compared to the other ones. It's like they're up in Skylab or something yeah. compared to, the, to their level. And there's everything in between. And, and Robin's talked about this before too, where a Sasquatch get enamored with a, a mate from some other group and go live with them. And, you know, the one that moved there to live with them is from some really kind of relic backwoods hillbilly group of Bigfoot that don't know much of any of these tricks. Oh, and then yeah. they go live with this new group and they're like, holy crap, how are you guys doing this stuff? Is, yeah. it, is it possible to learn that trick? Wow. <laughs> but hey, but I'm definitely on board with you about like, um, you know, we probably do have the same abilities. It's just we've been on left left brain thinking for so long and we've been dumbing dumbing down for so long that you know we don't know how to to do to use our uh pineal gland like you know we're yeah. supposed to plus all of the stuff we've got in the background and the chemicals and the food and everything right now calcifies it so that it's not going to work anyway and that's yeah. on purpose then the but water it, it, yep, it's, water. it's in the water and don't forget like alex jones said that atrazine's in the water too and turns the frickin' frogs gay. <laughs> yeah, and Alex. Alex no like that. No, he's a trip though. He is definitely. Um, yeah. Uh, is it okay if I t um, tell your viewers my channel? Yep. Want to let everybody know that before we sign out here because we are running a bit long, but I uh, want to get as many people over to your new channel as possible. Go check him out. He's a good guy. Obviously, you just heard. His um, frightful encounters, which I wouldn't wish on anybody, including myself, who's had a few scary ones. <laughs> oh man, Duke, um, first of all, Duke. Um, before I tell anybody what it is, I just want to thank you for um, having me on your platform. Um, it was definitely good to meet you. We're both friends with Robin. I appreciate I appreciate you tremendously. Um, I do have a YouTube channel, guys. It's rather new. I started it up. Um, in February and it's just a place where anybody that's had an encounter you know it's kind of like a safe safe place if you you know if you had an encounter anything like that you want to talk about it anything like that it is Red Creek Mafia 777 um, one more time Red Creek Mafia 777 and Red Creek Mafia 7 via Twitter there you go so you can find them over on Twitter too yeah, Red Creek Mafia. Uh, I had to come up with something, man. That was my old hunting club name. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I had a friend who used to have a club that all they did was meet in the shed and drink a few beers and tell stories about what happened that day. And they yeah. couldn't figure out what to call their clubs, so they called it the shed. Yeah. <laughs> T-shirts that had a picture of a shed with an arm throwing a beer can out the window. <laughs> Probably didn't do much hunting either, huh? No, that was all they do is go like go there for an hour or two after after work, drink some beers, tell each other about what happened that day, and then go home again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The shed. Not, not even touch the woods. <laughs> yeah. No hunting. No gaming. No nothing. Just drink a couple beers. What happened at work today? Oh, so and so kicked me off. Yeah. Thanks for the latest meeting of the shed. Um, <laughs> that was down in Florida, by the way. The shed. Yeah, you you just got a you just got a new uh, computer, right? Uh, no, I'm I'm working on a uh, backup computer right now. My main computer died. The only thing I can do with that thing now is very short videos, which you guys probably noticed that I'm putting out very short videos. That's why I can't do full length with it. By the time you guys see this one, I will have figured out how to use the other video processing program that I've got on computer B in order to make full length videos happen again. Yeah. So, cool. and you'll, you will already have seen the one where I was at the ghost town of Coloma with all the dramatic drone video on the 31 inch tracks. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. That was, that's a big track though, man. Good. Oh God. God. Yeah. I'm still like hoping it's not really a track, but every, everybody that I show the video and the picture to looks at it and goes, it's not a tire rut. I'm like, God oh, damn it. Yeah. I want it to be a tire rut. I mean, what, what do you even do with something that has a 31 inch track? I mean, leave you can't even area. I want a tank. You leave the area. And the yeah. other thing is it does not conform to the um, standard parameters of a Bigfoot foot, especially one that big. The foot would be wider. It's proportioned exactly like a human track, except of immense size. Which leads me to believe that's not a Bigfoot track. It's a track from a friggin' giant. And he's around 16 feet tall. And I don't want to meet him. Yeah. Um, I almost made a smart ass comment, but I didn't know how you would take it. I mean, I was just going to be funny, but I was going to say, well, you know, that cannot be a track unless it's uh, unless it's 18 inches and it has a mid tarsal break, according yeah. to Meldrum. Yeah. And never waste your time looking up in trees because Bigfoot don't climb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's another one of his uh, sta sta statements of ridiculousness, courtesy of Dr. Footprints. Yeah, exactly. The ultra ridiculosity. Oh, yeah, and it's still Gigantopithecus. Never mind the fact they already sequenced the DNA and it's relative orangutans. And orangutan's foot looks like a hand. And they don't yeah. have a face anything like a human. But yeah, it's definitely Giganto. Right. Yeah. Breast of the lake in the bite of the wind is like a slap in the face. A legend of horror lurks in the haze. It's Bigfoot. A giant of a creature, all covered with hair, as tall as a timber and strong as a bear. Y'all better not go walking out there.
to the sands and to the great Shastars. From the Flatheads to Blackfeet and the Shoshones, he must have seen them all. And when the sun goes down in the Northwest woods, if you listen, you can hear him call. Bigfoot's coming, gonna get you, gonna get you, gonna get you. Yeah. <laughs>